Okairi! Welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be doing my March TBR. Okay, listen, look, I know, it's probably a week into March. <laughs> I don't know exactly when I'm gonna be posting this, but I'm guessing it's the 6th or the 7th. And you know what? A for effort, you know? I'm just gonna put this video out to let you guys know what's on my radar this month. Last month, I had a lot of books that I had on hold from the library that just didn't come through within the time constraints of the month. So these are all books that I really want to read and the holds should be coming in this month. So I kind of wanted to create um, a TBR this month that allowed space for me to kind of play catch up on books that I didn't get to but I wanted to or books that I have here. Um, you know, physically that I haven't read yet. There's also the factor of Miss Rona possibly being on the decline in the near future, especially in the U.S., which is where, you know, my, my family is where my parents are. Um, and so hopefully I can make a trip back to the States at the end of this year or beginning of next year is kind of the goal. And at that point in time, I'd like to take a lot of my physical books that I have here, I'd like to bring them in a suitcase, you know, across the pond and um, leave them in the States and then maybe bring a few uh, different ones back with me. Um, so I kind of want to start that process of changing what I have on my shelves here and uh, keeping just the books that I really want with me where I am now. So uh, in order to do that, I, I want to read all the books that I have here. So my goal is to kind of, not kind of, but definitely move through my physical TBR that I have uh, in the next couple months. And I really wanted to focus on that this month. So essentially that means this entire TBR is books that I have physically or books that I have on hold from the library that just didn't come through in time. The first book I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to get it out of the way at this point <laughs> because it's just a source of shame, and that's Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, in my TBR last month, I was so confident. I was like, this is my priority. I will get this book done. And here I am in March. Um, you know, props to me, I did start it. Um, I ended up doing a buddy read of this with Yasmin from Yasmin Be Reading, and it's exactly what I need. I basically told her, I need you to kindly bully me to pick this book up, which makes no sense because the Stormlight Archive is one of, if not my favorite, fantasy series ever. But it, I feel like the more I anticipate a book almost, the longer it takes me to pick it up, it almost feels like. I have no idea why. Maybe I subconsciously don't want to start it so it doesn't end. I have no idea. Um, but thanks to Yasmin, <laughs> who has DM'd me and been like, yo, where are you at? <laughs> like, you know, what chapter are you on? Uh, and uh, I needed that. So I did start this book. Uh, the prologue itself, I'm already like, I'm going to love this. Um, I've already tabbed a couple times in just the prologue, so uh, yeah, I'm really excited to continue with this. I have started it. I will say yet again, this is the priority this month. I really, truly, really, really mean it. <laughs> I think I'm going to get this done uh, and finish it in March. The next book on this list is Grey Sister, the second book in the Ancestor Trilogy. So I read Red Sister last year, I think in August, sometime over the summer, and it was a predicted five-star book for me. Um, I'll link down below my uh, recent wrap-up that I did of the five-star predictions that I made and then the books that I read and if they were actually five stars. So I did that recently and I do talk about Red Sister um, in that wrap-up. But um, it didn't end up being five stars, but I still really enjoyed it, and I think there's a lot of potential for me to enjoy the series still. So I'm going to see if I can get to Grey Sister. It looks relatively short, actually. It seems like it's less than 400 pages, you know, which for an epic fantasy is quite short. So hopefully I can get to this. Uh, you know, Rhythm of War is over a thousand pages, and as that being my priority, we'll see. <laughs> But I do want to, like I said, work through my physical TBR, so I haven't been making a lot of time to physically sit and read. Um, I have been doing a lot of studying, which I need to do, but I want to kind of balance that out a little bit. So hopefully I can make time to read some of these other physical books alongside that other one. 
Um, but I definitely am intrigued to see where this goes. I mentioned before that I think Mark Lawrence isn't the best at writing young female friendships, like young girl friendships, um, in Red Sister, but I think that his writing style would really match older friendship dynamics, which, you know, this book is a school trope, so every book the the kids get older, right? So, and become adults. So I'm excited to see how that kind of, if that aspect of the book that didn't hit for me works in this book. But yeah, the magic system and like the flash forwards that we got in the first book, like hinting at what the future is going to hold, uh, have me intrigued and excited uh, to continue with this story. The next one is one that you might have seen on the TBR or two before, and that is Children of Time. Uh, this is a sci-fi that I want to read so bad. It's about giant sentient spiders, and I hate spiders, and I, it makes me want to read it all the more. <laughs> I've heard really, really good things about this, uh, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but I really want to this month. <laughs> Again, this uh, this is a this is a chunker. It's about 600 pages. So um, I know I'm not going to get to all of these, but if I had to choose, I think this one would be my next priority besides Rhythm of War because I really want to get more into sci-fi. And I think I don't know why, but I feel like this book is really going to do it for me. So um, I don't know. I'd really like to to get to this this month. Um, really, fingers crossed that I can. The next one here is not on my physical TBR, but it's one of those books that didn't come in until too late last month, and that is the second book in um, Vampire Academy, which is Frostbite. Uh, I, you know, this is an older series, so I didn't expect to really have to wait for, you know, my hold to come in, but your girl was waiting for about three weeks. Uh, so it finally came in, um, and I think actually the time on my hold is ticking down now, so I need to get my ass in gear. I think I've got about five days left, so um, it's in, you know, an older um, YA book, so I think that I could blow through that pretty quickly in a day or two, so maybe I'll set a time, you know, a time limit, maybe a 24-hour readathon or something where I read that book uh, this weekend. So, yeah, I do really want to read this book. I loved the first book. I have a whole vlog of me, you know, predicting the book and, and um, you know, showing my reactions to it, so I'll be sure to link that um, down below and up above as usual. Uh, if you want to check that out, but I was so pleasantly surprised by this series and I can't wait to read the second one. I think it's going to be great. This next one is another one that I was waiting for from the library that didn't come in and it broke my heart because I want to read it so bad and that is Ray Bearer. Um, this book still has two weeks on the wait. Uh, for it, I put a hold on the audiobook and the physical book, and whichever one comes in first, I will read. Uh, so I, I really want to pick this up, but both of them had like a five week wait, so I was like, well, we'll see if a miracle happens and someone reads it fast, you know, and the time bumps up, but such was not my luck, so <laughs> I'm still waiting for it, but when it comes in about halfway through this month, um, I'm definitely going to be prioritizing that because I want to read it really bad. I don't know much about it except that it's a fantasy. I think it's a YA fantasy. Um, and it's about a young girl whose mother is like a deity or a god of sorts, and that power is going to be passed down to her and lay on her shoulders. And as such, her mom, I think, is really, really strict and controlling, and she doesn't really have much freedom. And from what I from what I know, it's just her kind of journeying to find herself and, and you know, find her own power. And that sounds awesome. <laughs> like I'm so so down for that kind of like self-growth story so and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book so really hyped to finally get my hold in eventually uh, and I'll be picking that up right away if you can trust me after not picking up Rhythm of War for like three months but you know take from that what you will <laughs> Another one that I had on my TBR last month that just didn't come in in time was How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House. Uh, this book is not up my usual, you know, alley. It's not my usual genre, but I, when I do read more contemporary or, you know, books set in our current world, I like them to be heavy hitting. Um, I don't really like fluff set in our world, and I don't know why, it's just not my thing. But this particular book seems like it's going to tackle a lot of those heavy hitting things that I like, you know, my books to give me, and I like to think about. So again, I don't know much about this because I did read the synopsis quite a while ago, but I believe that it's about a woman who is working maybe as a maid or 
some some job in similar to that uh, in a place where typically the people who live there hold jobs such as maids or cleaners and then uh, they're usually people of color and then white people or affluent people come to this same location to vacation. So I don't think this book is set in Hawaii but Hawaii would be an example of that where a lot of people go there to vacation but the actual people who live on the island uh, live in poverty often so there's a big disparity there so this book is talking about a location like that I don't remember exactly where um, and it talks about that disparity um, and that just sounds like something that I know exists but I haven't really delved into any stories talking about it honestly and I'm excited to see what the author does with this if the hold at the library is any indication, it must be amazing because this one had an eight week wait <laughs> from my library and I was like, good God. I mean, it's a new release this year and I'm very happy for the author, but I just didn't expect that. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just always in the fantasy world, so I'm not aware of what's getting hype outside of it. So maybe it was, you know, really hyped. Um, but yeah, I'm still waiting. I think this one has three weeks left <laughs> on the wait so hopefully it'll come in in March and I can read it. Uh, I think again I put a hold on both the audio and the physical so whichever one comes in first I'll be picking this up and hopefully it hits my soul and it hurts me a little bit <laughs> as apparently I like my books to do. The next book on this list is The Soul of an Octopus. Uh, I bought this a couple months ago um, and I I just, I don't know why I haven't picked this up yet, but I've been getting more into nonfiction uh, recently, especially audiobook format. But um, I want to read this one physically, I don't know why. <laughs> but typically I've been um, reading them in audiobook format. But this just talks about octopuses and, you know, how cool they are. <laughs> I, I live in Japan, and so there is a culture of eating you know, octopuses that isn't in the West. And it's really brought up this interesting moral question inside myself of whether I'm okay with consuming this creature. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, we can get into that discussion, you know, it's a whole other video. But I wanted to find out more about them as a first step. And they've always fascinated me. They're so smart. Uh, I mean, they can just, they're basically chameleons in the water. They can camouflage themselves. They've shown such an interesting ability to learn. And I just wanted to find out more about them. So this book has gotten some really good reviews from people. And uh, I don't know. I just wanna, I just wanna learn more about octopuses. I just think they're cool. So if I could get to this book this month, uh, that would make me really happy, <laughs> but we'll see. There are two books from my most anticipated books that came out in February that I didn't get to. Um, so these are not high priority. Well, one of them isn't. The other one's really high priority. But uh, I think I would be okay not getting to them this month as they're new releases and uh, I couldn't really get my hands on them right when they came out uh, because my style is, unless I know I'm gonna like the book or in very rare cases where I decide to take a chance, uh, I don't buy books until I know that I like them. So I have to wait for them to be available on, you know, Scribd or um, on from my library or something. And uh, it's just not, you know, Secondhand stores are not a possibility for me either. So when new releases come out, they can take a little while for me to get to them. Uh, so the two that came out in February that were anticipated for me was, uh, I think this one was January actually, which was Hall of Smoke, and then uh, Black Coast came out last month. Now the one I really wanna get to is Black Coast. I don't know why, but this book just pulls me in. It calls my name. And I've been searching for it repeatedly on, you know, like I said, Scribd or my library, and it just hasn't come up yet. So I don't know. It may be one of those situations where I may have to make a purchase if I want to read it. So we'll see what I decide to do with that one. Um, doesn't sound like I'll get to it this month, does it? <laughs> But if I can somehow get my hands on it, that would be awesome. I don't know much about the Black Coast. Uh, it's basically got warrior dragons and a world at war. I'm interested, you know. It's calling my name. So we'll see if I can find a way to get access to it.
The last thing I want to say is that I'm trying to leave room in my TBRs for audiobook thrillers. I love audiobook thrillers. Uh, it's my favorite way to consume that genre. So, you know, I listen to audiobooks to and from work because I ride my bike to work every every day. So I use that time to, to read audiobooks. I can read fantasy via audiobook, but I tend to do better with that on a reread. When I'm first being introduced to a fantasy world, I like to read it physically. So I want to make sure I'm leaving space on my TBR for my audiobooks to be in the genre I enjoy, which is like thrillers. So I have one kind of that's been on my radar for a while, which is The Troop by Nick Cutter. Uh, he has quite a few books, but I've heard that this book is terrifying. I've heard it's like body horror, which I don't mind so much. Uh, if it's ghost horror, like nah, bitch, I'm out, like you can have that. But when it comes to body horror and like thrillers and like, you know, serial killers, like that type of thing, I really dig that. So this book is supposed to have like some creepy virus that it, it's, go it's giving me real like, um, what's it called? Not Catcher in the Rye. The one with the flies, Lord of the Flies, that's it. <laughs> it's giving me Lord of the Flies vibes. So I think I'm gonna pick this up as my next audiobook read as kind of like a refresher in between all these, you know, fantasies that I hope to read this month. Uh, but I think that that'll add some balance. Okay, that is a large enough <laughs> TBR, with most of them being physical. Uh, I think Rhythm of War is going to take up a large chunk of this reading time, which is fine. You know, I'm not complaining. I can't wait to throw myself into Roshar and just, you know, marinate in it. But I have to recognize it's probably going to take a lot of my physical reading time. So I would like to get to all of these, but if I could read three or four of these books physically, it would make me really happy concludes my March TBR. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these, uh, if you think I should prioritize some, if you make a case for a, a book or two, you know, maybe you can convince me to move it up on the priority list. Uh, but I really do want to work through my physical, the books that I have physically uh, in the next couple months. I want to make that a big goal of mine. So you'll see, if I don't get to this month, you'll probably see some of these books pop up <laughs> in the next TBRs. I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments down below, but for now, I'm going to head out. Jane.